A few weeks back, I made a base cabinet for the shop, but I never had time to put the face frame on it. So today I'll walk you through an easy way to get that job done. To assemble today's face frame, you'll need a few basic tools. A Craig jig set, and like this one, I got it for about $18. And you'll also need some screws, a square bit driver, and a clamp. The clamp I'm using is a $20 face clamp, also made by Craig, but if you already have some cheap clamps like these, you can totally make those work too. The material we're using is three quarter by an inch and a half pine that I ripped down from wider stock. But you can buy this material already sized at the lumber yard if you'd like. When you're building face frames, it's important to know the difference between the styles and the rails. The rails on the face frame run horizontally while the styles run vertically. And if you take a closer look, you can see that the rails fit between the styles. And this is really important to know when it comes to cutting and assembling the frame. Because I want my cabinet to have two finished sides, meaning that once it's installed, you're going to see both sides, I'm choosing to have the face frame styles overhang the box by a quarter of an inch, which leaves a half inch reveal on the inside. However, the overhang for the top and bottom rails will be different from the styles and different from each other. The top rail sits flush with the top of the cabinet, leaving a three quarter inch reveal on the inside while the bottom rail overhangs the cabinet by about 5 eighths of an inch and leaves an eighth of an inch for an inside reveal. Now by no means is this the only way to assemble face frames, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to keep it easy. To find the length of the styles, measure from the top of the cabinet down to the bottom shelf, then add 5 eighths of an inch for the overhang. Transfer that measurement to your face frame material and cut two pieces using a handsaw or a power miter box. To find the length of the rails, take one of the styles and hold it in place on the cabinet, making sure to have the correct amount of overhang, then make a pencil mark on the left side of the style. This mark represents the end of the rail on the right side. Repeat this process on the left, measuring and marking for its location. With that all done, measure between the two pencil marks to determine the total length for the top and bottom rails. Let me give you a quick tip when you're measuring between two specific pencil marks like what we have here. Instead of using the hook end on the tape measure as the starting point for your measurement, use the one inch mark instead. This gives you a better visual on the pencil marks and eliminates some of the guesswork because you're starting from an exact point on the tape measure. Just be sure to deduct one inch from your overall measurement, again because you're starting from one and not zero. With all four pieces cut to length, it's time to drill the pocket holes. Pocket holes are made from a jig like this, which is made mostly of plastic, but it has a metal sleeve that directs a drill bit at an angle into the wood. There are two important things to set up before drilling begins. First, you need to set the depth collar to the proper position on the bit. Craig recommends setting the collar at 3 and 9 sixteenths for 3 quarter inch material and that's what we're using today. To set the collar position, loosen the Allen screw and adjust the collar either up or down until you've reached your 3 and 9 sixteenths and then tighten everything back up. The last thing to set up or know is to where to locate the jig on the material. Craig recommends setting the jig flush to the end for 3 quarter inch material. So now that you got the bit all set up and you know where to place the jig on the material, it's time to drill four holes. Because the rails fit between the styles, the pocket holes will only need to be drilled in the rails, one on each end. To do that, locate the jig in the center of the rail, flush to the end, and clamp it in place. With the bit chucked up in the drill and the drill set to the drill setting, drill your first hole. Remove the clamp and repeat this process three more times. To assemble, add glue to the end grain of one rail and line it up with the style. Using the clamp, hold it into position while installing your first screw. The screws I'm using here are an inch and a quarter Craig screws. As you continue to assemble the frame, make sure not to over tighten the screws. So use caution while driving them. And if you want, it's a great opportunity to use the clutch on your drill. Before the glue dries, do a final inspection, which includes making sure that all the joints are tight and flush. Then once you're happy and the glue has had time to dry, go ahead and do your final sanding. The face frame can be attached in many different ways. Let's look at three methods. The first and easiest method is to add glue and then add a few face nailed brads to hold the frame into position while the glue dries. And this is the method I'm going to be using on this cabinet. Of course, if you're painting the cabinet like I am, this is totally acceptable. Even in some cases where you're staining the cabinet, face nailing still works. 
The second method uses glue and multiple clamps to hold the frame into position until the glue dries. This of course requires a lot of clamps, maybe 8 to 10 for a cabinet of this size. But if you don't have a lot of clamps, there is a way to do it with less and that's with the aid of a call. Calls are pieces of material bought or made that have a slight crown to them and are used to help distribute clamping pressure over a longer distance. For example, this one call could be used on the left side here, reducing the amount of clamps needed, again because the call is helping to spread out the clamping pressure. The last method is to use a Craig jig to drill pocket holes in the side of the cabinet. Of course, more planning would have to be done to make sure the pockets are either hidden or covered up. Regardless of what method you use, be sure to check the fit of the face frame before adding any glue. As you can imagine, once the face frame is set in the glue, it moves around very easily. So if you can't get it fast and quickly, like with a few brads, then it can become a bit messy and a bit discouraging. Therefore, one trick that a lot of woodworkers use is to put four brad nails in each corner of the cabinet and then snip off each one, leaving only about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Once that's done, you can add your glue, and this time when you position the frame on the box, the nails hold the frame above the glue, giving you the flexibility to move it around without a big mess. Then once you're happy with its position, you can tap the frame down into the brads and into the glue, securing it in place until you can get the clamps on. Whatever method you decide to do, just make sure that you double check your work, you take your time, and when in doubt, add another clamp. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them as always in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. See everybody next week.